Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Brice Copy. I come here to talk to you about a, a fun use case, because we don't have that much time during this quick session. So I thought it'd be something a bit entertaining. And we're going to talk to you about a, a use case we have with Docker and Java. And at first, I, I'm not a big fan of show of hands, but I have to do this one. How many of you use Docker in production today? Docker. Docker containers. OK, not so many. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to do a very quick introduction about Docker. And we're going to start with the age-old conflict that you know, spans the world of information technology. So you have, on one hand, developers like me, on the other hand, sysadmin. So as a developer, I want the latest and the best all the time. I want to redeploy any time I feel like it. And I don't want to be bogged down by any consideration, like an operating system, network connections. You know, all of this stuff doesn't interest me. Uh, my only problem is when I have a security issue. In that case, I've got to be quick. Now, on the other hand, we have a sysadmin. Now, my sysadmin, I don't know about yours, but Mine is quite conservative. He doesn't like to restart things. He doesn't like to upgrade unless he really has to. And most of the time, he'd rather that I don't deploy anything on these beautiful machines that he sets up for me. And we have a, we have a bit of a back and forth there. And now, how can we, how can we fix that? Now, at CERN, we're not, um, I mean, we do cutting edge science, but we can't always do cutting edge everything. You know, we got to be conservative. If the LHC is up and running for a year or 18 months at a time, we just can't feel, uh, restart and redeploy things the way we feel like it. So we got we to gotta stay within some reasonable boundaries. And I mean, so far, there weren't many options to, to con reconcile, reconcile these, two, uh, these two problems. And with a technology like Docker, you have an option. You have an option to deploy self-standing, completely isolated units of um, computation. They're called microservices, typically. And Docker lets you do that in a very clean manner. And if you want to deploy Java applications on, in a Docker container, it's, it's very easy. I mean, you, you'll find tons of images out there, base images that let you build on top of. And so you'd find this, you'd find at the bottom operating system dependencies. On top of that, a few native dependencies that are essential for any Java runtime to, to operate on. Then you find a Java runtime, so typically Oracle, uh, GRE, or JDK, or OpenJDK. And on top of that, you're free to deploy your application. And now all of this is very bare bones. Like, I mean, we're not talking about advanced anything. You just need a Java runtime. Now, if you go on the internet and you look around and you find these base Java images, you'll see that they, they weigh way more than they should. The, the typical uh, con container size is going to be about 200 megs. 200 megs without even any of my code, just basic dependencies. And when I went to my sysadmin, I said, look, I want to do Docker in production. And he said, what's Docker? So I explained, oh, it's going to be very easy. I'm just going to ship an entire operating system and all the native dependencies in a, in a binary blob, and I'll just ship it to your machines. And he was like, what? What are you going to do? I have a fantastic operating system running on these machines. It's very stable, and I don't want you to add yet another operating system on top, another layer of headaches. And that's what he was right. I mean, you're going to introduce a new operating system, new native dependencies that come with their own vulnerabilities, and probably your own Java runtime version, which is not the one is, is set up on the, on the host machines. And now we have a problem. And I couldn't disagree with him. He was right. I was going to do that. So I need to find another solution. And maybe we can reduce the weight of these containers, make them easier to ship, easier to patch, and just keep, keep the sysadmins happy. And why not? Why can't we do that? In Docker, you have the possibility. You can define volumes. So you can say, this is my, my container, but inside that container, there's a hole, and I have to plug it with something. And you could do that with the Java runtime. Why not? Um, so I came across examples on the web of people doing that. They just prepare containers, and they have all the placeholders for a Java runtime, except it doesn't have a Java runtime. And now the advantage of this is I can go back to my sysadmin and I can 
package my application and the few native dependencies that are essential for, for my uh, Java runtime to, to run, but no Java runtime. I just point to whatever is on the host machine, mount it as a volume. So I mentioned why, but why? Because you want to have a smaller container, it ships faster. We're going we're to have a look at uh, the order of magnitudes we're talking about when it comes to container image size. And I don't want to upgrade the Java runtime. I guess it's not really my business, and I just care about the application. And as a result, it's less patching and less black box. You know? My sysadmin knows exactly what ships in my containers, because it's much simpler. And when we talk about size, this is your typical um, uh, container size comparisons. And you're going to say, yeah, of course, it's much smaller. Yeah, I don't have a Java runtime in there, so I've already saved 80 megabytes. And so on one hand, you have the typical CentOS 7, shipping with a, a server Java runtime. And you have another option, which is very light, 2.3 megabytes. This is uh, uh, using BusyBox OpenWRT. I don't know if you know this operating system. It's a very lightweight Linux distribution for uh, routers, small boxes, embedded systems. And Unfortunately, OpenWRT is not very much of an operating system. It doesn't really have a packaging uh, repositories. It doesn't have a packaging system, so it's very light. Um, if I wanted to go a bit more uh, easy to manage and patch for me, I could use uh, Alpine Linux, which is a, a two megabytes um, uh, Linux distribution that ships with the very bare minimum to operate a Docker container. And here we have uh, the Alpine container with JLibc, with libstandard C++, and ready to host a, a Java runtime. Um, so how do you get there? What do you have to do? If you're not familiar with Docker, um, it's, it's not that complicated, but, but you've got you to look around. I mean, the problem with Docker is that everybody is writing a base image and upgrading it as we speak. There are five, ten people now working on a Java base image or a PHP-based image, or a Node.js-based image, what are you going to do? Um, so uh, you can just uh, do like me. If you don't trust anybody to pick the right dependencies and, and get the right uh, container image, you can start from scratch, really scratch, zero. And, um, and just choose your, your lightweight operating system. I mean, I've come across OpenWRT and Alpine, but there are more options out there. Uh, get your standard libraries. This is not that simple to rebuild these libraries. Better rely on somebody who's done the work for you, the heavy lifting, but uh, they exist. People, uh, people are, are, uh, are kind enough to contribute this type of work. And then you just position your symbolic links inside your container, ready to host a, a Java runtime. And um, when it comes to rent, I don't know if you can all read the bottom line here, but this is what it would look like. So it looks a bit arcane, a bit, a bit uh, uh, complicated, but really it isn't. The first parameter that you care about is this minus V. That's telling Docker, I'm going to make you run this Alpine Pico Java 8 container, and by the way, you're going to inject a Java runtime in there, and it's, you do it with this minus V, and you tell it, uh, this is my host Java runtime, and this is where it's going to end up inside my container. Now, the application that I base, uh, the, my, uh, base upon this, uh, this container will just assume that the Java home is under opt GRE 1.8. And that's what the, the Docker file looks like for, for, for you if you're interested in getting into Docker or if you're already using it. A bunch of environment variables, a bunch of in this case, it's Alpine Linux. So I've got a, a bunch of APK um, uh, package manager calls, getting a few binaries that are kindly being built for me. I mean, you could do it yourself. I could do it myself. But in that case, I relied on, on, on the work of uh, this guy on, on GitHub. And just um, you, you could be also injecting a few more uh, certificates or anything to make it fit with your security environment. And, and then you just leave the symbolic links in place, ready to be, um, to be used here. <clears throat> so you, 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 you're probably wondering, in the day and age of clouds and um, swarm deployments, uh, why, why do we need this? Well, 
I think if, if, you, if you're like me, uh, if you work in a more traditional environment, a bit more slow-paced, there's going to be a long time before we go Docker and cluster all over the place. And I think this is a, an interesting compromise between uh, a strongly, st um, strongly managed host environments and the possibility to ship uh, code that's, that's up to date and using the latest uh, dependencies. And so there's a few more links if you're interested in uh, looking into this approach. First, I have two uh, ready-made containers for you, but you know, don't take my word for it. Take the Docker file and then rebuild it on your site if you want. And then a few more pointers about people who came, uh, came up with this approach um, and that inspired this, this type of work. So thank you very much for your attention. I'll take any questions. If you have discussions, ideas, um, I'm ready. I'm listening for you. Uh, yes? Well, yeah, well, <laughs> at first I had to do all this gymnastic, which was I'm going to prove to you that I'm not going to make, I'm not going to introduce uh, security vulnerabilities really more than I need to. When I said busy box, it felt already quite more relaxed. I said, okay. And then, um, and, and then, um, no, <laughs> you know which sysadmins I'm talking about. Uh, have a chat with them, sit down, and, and explain how you're going to do this deployment. Because if they, if, they, if they understand how you're going to deploy things, at which pace you're going to deploy it, then they'll be more relaxed about it. Um, this is still not, this is, this is not to announce that there's going to be wide, wide uh, release of, of this, but it's, it's possible if you, if you minimize your, your dependencies and you, you reassure them that it's going to be okay. Yeah. It's going to be stable and it's not going to be insecure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I started explaining that. I'm going to say, you know, first it's going to be okay because uh, you as a sysadmin, you're going to define which base image we use and you're going to upgrade this base image. And, uh, and he quickly said, no, I, I don't, I don't want to upgrade base image, Docker base images. And I, don't, and I don't have, today there are no widespread tools that let you define policies that could say, okay, I don't want to see any containers that are not based on one of these two or three uh, uh, container-based images. Uh, at least at Sun, we don't have that kind of stuff yet. And so maybe it's something to, to look in. Also, scanning, you know, scanning, when you scan your containers, even if you use uh, well-established uh, images like uh, Tomcat image, you, you scan it and they contain minor security vulnerabilities that... Um, so I didn't want my sysadmin to have to deal with this kind of thing. Uh, so I wanted to reduce it to the minimum. Yeah, so that, that's the main, uh, the main motivation by this. I can't rely on the cache, I can't rely on my sysadmin to uh, re, uh, define base images, and he wasn't going to let me do that kind of work anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, I agree with you, it's, it's a case corner, it's a, co a corner case. It's not, a, it's not something that you'll find everywhere. Most of people say, okay, I've got uh, those layers, and they're cached, and you know, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So it's exactly what I told him. I said, today I'm shipping native dependencies that I got here and there. They're proprietary. They come from the industry. They come with a license. I don't even have a choice. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm keeping up to date with security. It's not going to patch that kind of stuff. Yeah. The, G, the Java runtime, um, the way it's done at turn, at least it's safe to assume that he's going he's to keep up with that because that's part of his, of his mandate. So, so that's something that I could, I could rely on. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, next. <laughs>